check, check. Thank you. Peter, did you fix this? Okay.
I just want to welcome everybody tonight. Such an awesome day today. We had a, we just had an amazing morning just in worship and spent some time together this afternoon and just hung out and ate and talked and it was, it was awesome. It just kind of feels like church has been going on all day. So. I'm so excited to have Leonard here. <laughs> Man, we just, we love Leonard. We love being able to play music with him. And what a blessing, what an honor it is. So we're gonna, I don't know what's gonna happen tonight, but this is our, this is our last, uh, last night here for this weekend. So we'll see. We're just gonna go for it until we're too tired to do anything. Praise Him, all angels and heavenly hosts, ye armies of heaven, great beings of old. Sun and the moon and the stars in the night, all ye waters that be there above the sky. Hold 
and love and peace Granting refuge in Zion A city with no need for sun or moon To light her streets I'm 
place. Come on, come on, come on. The key is at the door. 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 You have no excuse not to sing that when we get to that. Y'all ready? 
Take a deep breath because we're not finished. <laughs> Stop. My sin got lost where east meets west Under the sea of forgetfulness My hope is built on nothing less Than Jesus' blood and right Triumphs over judgment
mercy triumphs over judgment. I turn to see the things I've done. All I find is the love. Yes, it's all gone. I will rejoice. I. Love, love, 
us to open up the gates, um, that you can talk through us, that you can speak through us, you can touch this world through us.
going to rest for a little while. Is that okay with you guys? Isn't, isn't, isn't this supposed to be a day of rest? I, I believe that's right. I think that's in the Bible. On the seventh day, the Lord rested. So, I don't know what we're going to do, but, but we're going to stop for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> You guys have water? You have water, Peter? You got you guys okay? What's going on over here? Oh, thank you, Lord. Well we're just we're getting started. We got a pretty good start. Amen. We're getting going. God, thank you. I'll share a couple things. Anybody else have anything they want to jump in here on? I don't know. If you have anything, do anybody? Let me know. But I'm going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I just think that it's really awesome that Paul could write to the churches and, you know, he'd write to the churches that he, uh, the Lord used him to plant and and he talked about the things that he was going through. It's really straight out, honest and open about the things that he was going through. And I just wanted to start in verse 9. It says, For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last as it were appointed to death for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men we are fools for Christ's sake but you are wise in Christ we are weak but you are strong ye are honorable but we are despised even under this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor working with our own hands being reviled we bless we bless being persecuted we suffer for it being defamed we entreat we are made as the filth of the world and are the off scouring of all things unto this day. And I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. And I just thought we'd just talk about this a little bit, about fathers and sons, because um, you see there in verse 15, it says, for though we have 10,000 teachers or 10,000 instructors in Christ, we have uh, not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you um, through the gospel. So he's talking about there's, you know, there's all kinds of teachers there's, um, that, that can teach the word of God. There's all kinds of instruct, instructors. In fact, as he's talking here that there's 10,000, you know, there's 10,000 instructors, but few fathers. 
I believe that whether the Lord is doing in this time that we're in is he's raising up fathers. He's, he's establishing fatherhood in this place. And, and many of the, the sons here are now have now become fathers. And you know how you brood over your children. You know how you brood over your sons that are growing up now. And that's how your fathers, how your spiritual fathers brood over you and brood over uh, the things of God. They covet the things of God for you, for the next generation, for the, and for the generation to come. They think uh, in, in, along the lines of establishing things and permanence. And, uh, one of the things that we... Our heart for this place... I believe that the Spirit of the Lord is brooding over this place. He wants this place to be established as a, as a permanent uh, dwelling place for the presence of God. He doesn't want this to end. He wants to continue it. He's building something powerful here, building something for the future. And uh, I just really appreciated so much what Leonard was sharing this morning. It was really powerful. Um, I just wanted you to hear... Paul's heart here in another passage is in uh, 2 Corinthians 11. Okay, are you guys done resting now? Okay. <laughs> Shucks. Just hear Paul's heart in this passage. It's just, uh, Paul says in 23, I, I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths often. Of the Jews, five times received I 40 stripes. Save one, so 39 stripes, five times he was beaten. Five times, 39 stripes. Wow. It's hard to fathom that. Three times was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils, of waters and perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness. And then listen to what he says in verse 28. He says, Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the concern for the churches. And so I think of all the things that he went through here that we just read about, the thing that on the inside of his heart was this concern for the churches that I think was I think overwhelming and maybe even unbearable at times. We know that later um, he wrote to Timothy, he says, all the churches in Asia have left me. Don't you leave me too, Timothy. So Paul really um, sharing, he's just, just pouring out his heart here uh, to the churches. His confession concern for the churches. He wrote over and over again. Uh, let's just turn there. It's in uh, Ephesians 3, uh, 4, I think it is. I just want to talk a little bit about, um, our, about our conversation. It's talking here about, you know, you all know the passage um, about ministry gifts in verse uh, 11. If you back up a little bit, say, so he that descended also, uh, he that ascended also descended, gave gifts unto man. It talks about ministry gifts to the body of Christ there, and then for the perfecting of the saints or for the equipping of the saints to do the work of the ministry. 
And then he goes right in and he starts talking about this part about equipping. He's talking about conversation, our conversation, our speech, our motives, what's going on with us in our hearts anyway. And so I want to talk about that just a little bit. Um, because he says you put off, in verse 22, put off, concerning the former conversation, the old man. That old man, that old man that died when you got saved, that old man ought not to be attached to you now. And he's saying here that to put off the conversation of the old man, the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts. But be renewed in the spirit of your mind in that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, here I just want to read that again, that ye put on the new man, put on the new man. You're a believer now, you're born again now, you're serving God now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you now. The Holy Ghost uh, resides, lives and dwells in you. Therefore, Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. I love that passage of scripture about the sons of God in 1 John and then 2 there. See if I can remember it. It says something like, uh, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us that we may be called the sons of God. We are, we are the sons of God. He put it on us. He put on so much love, poured out so much love on us. And now here we are being called the sons of God. And it says, therefore, the world doesn't know you because it knew him not. It knows you not because it knew him not. It says, now we are the sons of God, and we don't know what we shall become, but we know that we will be like him when we see him as he really is. And everyone that has this hope purifies himself even as he is pure. He pur purifies himself even as he is pure. So this is what we do as believers. We are continually working on ourselves in this process of putting on the, the new man, putting on the new man, and purifying ourselves, allowing that refiner's fire to come upon us. Even when we gather together like this, allowing the refiner to come, the refiner's fire to come, and burn up the dross and anything that needs to go, so that we can make sure that every day we're putting on the new man. The new man. Everyone that has this hope, the hope of his coming, the hope of his return. Like Leonard was talking about this morning, we get to spend forever with him, worshiping him, and doing other things, building things, and all of that. But he that has this hope purifies himself even as he is pure. Think about that. Meditate on that. Get that word in your heart. I just want to show you a couple things there. I might have to have somebody that has uh, iPhones to look up a couple things for me, if that's okay, because I know you're really good at it, some of you. I wanted to share this over in... Uh, over and so I just, I'm really kind of finishing something that I said about three weeks ago, and I just wanted to, because I never really did get to it, and I'm just going to be pretty brief with that passage, but it's in Peter, second chapter of Peter, and it's verse, or chapter, chapter one, and I, and I quoted verse 10, it says, for he that, for he, for ye that do these things, if you do these things, you will never fail. And so everybody wants to know what that is. We all do. 
I mean, if we knew that there was something that we could do, some things that we could apply to our life and we would never fail, we, we'd certainly want to do it, and that's what we're thinking about right now. We want to obey Him. We want Him to be Lord. That's what the kingdom of God is all about. It's to make, the kingdom of God is where Jesus is Lord. He has lordship over our lives, over our hearts, and all of that. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. So let's just look at this just a minute. I want to try to hold the mic a little bit closer to my face so that, because um, I think we have to do that when we're up here, because evidently sometimes they don't, people that are watching in don't, uh, are not able to understand us. We're not we're pretty quiet. Um, just get an under, just to really get a working understanding of this passage. It says, according in verse three, according as His divine power hath given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. Okay, so verse 1. According to his divine power has given unto us all things. So it's supernatural now. It's his divine power at work in our lives. His divine power that, at work in our lives. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him through knowing Him. It's through knowing Him that we have or that we receive everything that He has for us per pertaining to life and godliness. It's, it's if we go on to know the Lord. It says in Hosea chapter 6, if we go on to know the Lord, Paul said, I want to I want to know him. I want I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know him. I want to know him. I haven't attained to all of it yet. I want to know him. And it's it's through that desire in you to want to pursue the Lord and to know Him more, that you have everything that you need pertaining to, God, to life and godliness. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of that divine nature. Partakers. You eat of it. You, you are a partaker of his divine nature. The power to be called the sons of God. that you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Escaping it. Escaping the corruption that is in the world through lust. And he goes right from there. You know, when, when we were back there in Ephesians 4, he talked about putting on that new man, the old man was, was corrupt with deceitful lusts, with this new man that we put on because we know Christ has given us this gift, really, to become partakers of his divine nature. And then he goes on to talk here a little bit about faith. He says, add to your faith virtue. And that word virtue means um, moral excellence. Oh man, you've got to be thinking about this stuff. We have to be thinking about this. We have to be meditating on this. But 
Virtue is moral excellence in everything that we do. We think about what we do before we do it. We measure how what we do is going to affect others, putting others in a place of more importance than, than us. How is what, if I do that, if I go there, if I say that, How's that going to affect others? Moral excellence, virtue. And it says here that we're supposed to we're supposed to put it in our hearts. And we always want we always want the Spirit of God to just go bloop and you're good. But this, these are things that he wants us to do. These are things that he is calling us to do. He says, if you do these things, you will never fail. But that's what we want to do. We don't want to fail. We don't want to stumble and fall. We don't want to keep going over the same dealing with the same sin in our life over and over again. But it says, uh, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge. Add to your faith virtue. Virtue is really important to you. Jesus is saying that virtue is really important to you. Moral excellence is really important to you. He wants you to walk in it hour by hour, day by day, week by week. He wants you to walk in moral excellence. Add to your faith virtue. He wants you to make the right choices. Because you've been delivered from this present evil age. You've been delivered from it. Your sinful nature was nailed to the cross, nailed to that tree. And it no longer has a hold on you. So you can walk in moral excellence. Flee youthful lust, the Word of God says. Flee youthful lust. Add to your virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. You know, it's one of the things about patience, I just want to say, you know, I'm just saying, you know, when, when you come in, we want to enter into that worship circle. Man, like Leonard was singing tonight, talking about, you know, really provoking us, you know, provoking us to good works, provoking us to, to uh, open our gates. When we come into the presence of God, oh, we need to open our gates. We need to, we need to get into our heart. We need to get out of our heads and get into our heart, and we need to forget about some things sometimes. We need to at least lay it down, lay it, lay it down and give it over to the Lord. That's what he says to do. He says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Enter into that, that place of worship, you know. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, you know, can you tarry with me an hour? Can you even tarry with me for an hour? You couldn't tarry with me for an hour? That's what Jesus said to his disciples, to his followers. We should be able to tarry with him for an hour. Better yet, we should just never leave his presence. How about that? Just never leave his presence. Just stay in his presence all the time. Walk in the spirit all the time. 
If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts and the desires of the flesh. So don't go there. Be a worshiper. That's your DNA. You are a worshiper. And you think about what you do. You're walking through life. You're sober about your life. You're responsible about your life. You're walking in moral excellence and you're not... It's just not about you anymore. It's about so, so much more than you. But you think things through. Contemplate the, the seriousness of yielding to temptations and how that's going to affect other people around you. Even in your conversation, you're afraid there's, there's, there's certain things that now you just can't, you just can't say. So putting on that new man is all about. I just wanted to talk real quick about conversation. I'm just going to click back to First Peter in chapter one, or excuse me, First Peter chapter. The things that God is doing in our lives is supernatural. It's the Spirit of God, His divine nature, His Spirit, Jesus Christ, poured out His Spirit, and His Holy Spirit came into you when you gave your heart to the Lord and you became a new creature, the Word said, you became a new creation. And you belong to Him now. You belong to Him now. He's the Lord now of your life. It says, uh, could you look up uh, the word malice? I don't know who else has their little... Uh, has a somebody over here got one? Look up uh, guile. Look up guile. And hopefully, at the end of the night, we're just going to run as fast away from these words as we can possibly run, because these these words should not even be. Um, <laughs> if these things are on the inside of us. Whew. Wow. We got quite a mixture going on in the house. There's quite a mixture going on in the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is us. And then the other, was there somebody who could look up another word? So the other word is duplicity. 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 Never thought about that word very much. But in verse 2, I'm going to get back to that, but in verse 2 it's talking about desiring and loving the milk, the, the sincere milk of the word. Just, it's like Len Leonard, you said so many things this morning <laughs> that were so awesome. That was one of them. Love the writer. Love the writer of the word. Man. And desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. See, you're growing. Desire that milk of the word and you will grow spiritually. You will grow spiritually. And his divine nature is going to take hold in your life. If you do that, 
and enter into that worship circle, which is so important, that you yield to the presence of the living God, that you yield to, the, to his um, dealings in your life and worshiping him in, in spirit and in truth. I think worship, doesn't the word worship mean man down? You know, what does the word worship mean? Is it, I mean, what, what's the posture of worship? Is it on your face, so to speak? Huh? I think it means on your face. It's It's humbling. It's humbling. But how could you not be humbled by the word of God? How could you not be humbled when John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. I mean, even saying worthy is the Lamb makes you want to lay down because of what that Lamb did for us on the cross when he shed his blood. It makes you want to lay down. It needs to make you want to lay down. Okay, Peter's talking about here, we're going into it, here's another one of the apostles. I think we're really talking about the apostles' doctrine when, we, when we, we're talking about the condition of the heart, our motives, our actions, and um, our conversation. Um, something, something in our heart that might want to hurt another living person. Something in you that might rejoice over somebody else's downfall or failure. They're talking about those things. It's the, the, the apostles' doctrine. A lot of it has to do with, you know, the, the message of the gospel of the kingdom of God is making uh, him Lord in every area of our life. So just, just verse 1, again, it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and envy and all evil speakings. Man. Okay, we're going to read what those, uh, those words defined. I don't know. I just think we read the Bible. We just blow over scriptures like, oh, okay, malice. Let's get on to the good and Malice, okay, guile. You know, let's get on to the next one here. We read the Bible, and we really don't read it for what it really is, and it is the power of God. The Word of God is alive. It's quick and powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. The Word of God, and it's the authority in all the universe, it's imperial authority over every other authority. The word, the spoken word. And when you read it, read the word that way. It's like, it's like desiring the sincere milk of the word. Treat it like it's that, like it's nourishment, like it's uh, something that could be life-changing when you read it. You know, I read that scripture. If I apply that to my life, it's going to change my life. Yes, it's going to change your life because His divine nature is going to come upon you and come in you and change you as you yield and surrender your will to the Spirit of the living God. That's it. That's how we can live in harmony. That's how we can walk together and, and agree. That's how we can live together as family and community. We have to know 
the limitations and the requirements and the accountability that the Lord puts on us. He puts accountability on us. He puts limits on us. He does. The church of the living God that He loves, it's just not some kind of a free-for-all where everybody can just go out and do whatever they want to do. That's not what the kingdom of God is. That's not what the church of the living God is. But we're talking about things that professing Christians have in their hearts that need they need to hightail it and be cast off, cast down, cast out, whatever it is, um, it needs to happen. Because God Resist the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. He loves a, hung a humble heart. A humble heart. Just show him your humble heart. Okay, can you, can you read that? Here, let's, I'll come over there. Okay, this is, is this malice? This is really going to be painful. <laughs> painful. Malice is a desire to inflict injury, harm, or suffering on another, either because of a hostile impulse or out of deep-seated meanness, the malice and spite of a lifelong enemy. And the second definition is evil intent on the part of a person who commits a wrongful act injurious to others. Okay, so... mean-spirited, you want to make somebody pay. Um, that, was, that was really something. So Peter's saying, lay aside all malice and guile. Okay, who's got the guile scripture? Or the guile definition. Sorry, it's not a scripture. Insidious, cunning in attaining a goal, crafty or artful in deception, duplicity. That's what it says here. Okay, read that a little bit louder. Insidious, cunning in attaining a goal, crafty or artful in deception. What else was there? That's it. Okay, duplicity. Who has duplicity? Somebody else look up duplicity. Deceitfulness in speech or conduct as by speaking or acting in two different ways to different people concerning the same manner. Ouch. Double dealing. Okay. We know that there was a man in the Bible. Well, it, certainly it said about Jesus that he, that he had no guile found in him. But there's also Nathaniel. Remember Nathaniel? Jesus said that of Nathaniel. He, Nathaniel, a man in whom there is no guile. This is what we want the Lord to say about us. Yeah. About us. About you. About me. No guile. He was a good man. He was a good woman. He, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what we want people to say. In, in, uh, in whom there is no guile. There's no crafty, artful d deception going on. Um, motives that I'm going to get what I want, and this is the way I can get it. If I, if I you know, scoot around this and scoot around that, I can get what I want. I can lie, cheat, steal. All of those things. This is what guile is. This is what we don't want people to say about us.
I just think that we need to review it. I think that people need, we all need to get a really strong conviction about these three words. Malice, guile, duplicity. I know Peter was singing the, I think it was the last song that he sang. He was talking about that entering in through the straight gate, people, the straight gate, the narrow way. Man, you can't walk down that, that narrow road that leads to life if you have guile, if guile is found in you, if malice is found in you, if hatred, all of those things are found in you. The Word even teaches us over in Galatians chapter 6 that we can't even enter into the kingdom of God if those things are operating in our life. Well, we're supposed to be cunning. Doesn't the Word say we're supposed to be uh, wise as serpents but harmless as doves? But wise as serpents. Learn to... Ask Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to help you, to help us. You know, through, through discernment, um, that we could see evil for what it really is and not call good evil and evil good. We need to have a good smeller. Ask the Lord to give you a good smeller, a good discerner, so that you understand what's going on. Right? This is, uh, these are some things that we could go in and dissect, you know, further. Talking about, it talks about envy here as well. And uh, we're going to do that a different, you know, we'll do that at a different time. This is what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to be lovers, you know. He wants us to be lovers. He wants us to have, uh, he wants us to be soft and tender hearted. He wants us to be harmless as doves. He doesn't want us to have a, an eye for an eye attitude. He doesn't want us to be thinking of ways that we can get back at somebody that, that wronged us. I think these are very important, important things. I'll just end with this because David was, David, David said this out loud. And I remember we, somebody taught us this a long time ago and it had to do with our con we were talking about conversation. We've been taught about uh, conversations, and this this is one that works really good. This is this is kind of a you know I don't know a side trip over here, but it just had to do with motives. And sometimes people say things and they have a motive in the saying of it. That's what guile is, really. That's what guile is. But they have a motive, or they have a behind-the-back motive, a flea flicker. 
uh, a flea flicker, uh, a motive for saying what they're saying. And it could be it could be divisive in nature. It could be, I mean, there's just a, a whole lot of things that it could be. Um, but you need to get good at doing that. You need to get good at saying, you know, hey, wh why did why did you say that? What was your what was your motive for saying that? Or, or why did you say what you just said? You ever do that? Don't just let people say whatever they want to say to you without a, you know, a, you know, sometimes you got to push back a little bit. Push back a little bit. Why did, why did you say what you just said? I'm just trying to get my head around why you said what you just said. Don't be afraid to do that. Isn't that what about that? How it went? Something like that. Okay. Whew. I think our musicians are, are they done yet? Ready? Did you get rested up yet? I think they did. Um, and just for just for the young people here, I'm just kind of just reminding you tonight. Just remember that your fathers, your spiritual fathers, they're brooding over you. <laughs> they uh, they uh, they want to see the fulfillment of the promise, the fulfillment of the destiny in your life. Your fathers are always thinking about you, brooding over you, wanting the best for you, wanting you to go beyond. And um, I just think that's a really good analogy, a good example that a lot of our young couples are having their own children now, and that's just what it's like. And you know, you brood over your natural sons, your spiritual sons, and you want absolutely want the best for them in every in every area. In every area, you want the shalom of God on your family, on your kids, not just financial prosperity or, or financial success. Come on. The shalom of God. That's what we want for our, our kids. Our spiritual sons and our natural sons and daughters, obviously. So, praise the Lord. I'm going to end with that. The Word of God is wonderful. It teaches us. It corrects us. It uh, allows us to see the motives of our own heart. That's what it's talking about there. That sharp sword. It reveals the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's what it does. And we should want that. Amen? We want that. Let's give Pete a good hand. Awesome. I just want to say a couple of things here. I think one thing I'm going to say is going to deal directly with Leonard Jones and his relationship with us here. Uh, did you, uh, we've already asked you, but did you have a good Father's Day? Amen. I've enjoyed the company of some of my kids. Uh, today, uh, you know, fathers give their kids teaching and training, and you're passing on all this stuff. My kids now, one of them, is 19, and a while ago he was telling me he's, they're passing on information to us too, you know. Of course, my eight-year-old does that too, maybe more than anybody, but. So Luke says to me, he says, Dad, you know, there's a lot of, uh, 
if you take a cold shower, one of the benefits, it boosts your testosterone. Now, he's 19. Uh, Pete, uh, anybody like 50, when you were 19, I didn't even know what testosterone was. I don't think we were thinking about it. I mean, like, how do you get more <laughs> at years ago? It wasn't on, on the radar. I guess we had enough. But anyway, so I, but I remembered he said that. And so uh, today I, took a, I ran this afternoon. And so I'm in the shower, and I'm thinking, God, I had to try that. <laughs> this is a... And honestly, I, so I get the cold water on, and you know what I got out of it? A pulled muscle in my neck. <laughs> and I turn it hot, and I just finish the shower. So I don't know if that's the way it was supposed to work, but... Hallelujah. But I want to say this. There's something this morning that happened and tonight. But I want to say this, that I believe that Leonard Jones, in a sense, lay, put out the gauntlet this morning. He laid out the baton for the fire starters, for all that were here in the sound of our voice. He laid out the gauntlet. And it's, are we going to pick it up? You know, he's a, a soft-spoken man. He means what he says, says what he means, but he didn't yell, he didn't shout. You know, he's Leonard Jones, and it's very impressive. Yeah. And... But if you missed that, the fact that what was going on was he's putting out the baton, raised the bar for us. And he is a, an extreme part of the, what I would call the mystery of fire starters. Now, a mystery is something that's hidden, a mystery or a secret, but I believe he is a part of the secret or the mystery, or let's just say the puzzle. Part of the puzzle of the ministry that God has given us and established here, he is an, an extreme part of that puzzle and that mystery. And part of it is being revealed. Amen? As he shared numerous things, including bringing his school and training here. But I want to say this, there are three ways that Many more besides this, but there are three definite ways that he is relating to us, okay? One, and Pete brought it up, we're seeing it tonight immensely, uh, but that word father that we're talking about a lot. He's relating to us as a father, all right? And as a father, they give identity, they give purpose, they say, you can do it. And he's relating as a father, and the father's spirit is in him. But there's another way that he's relating, and that's, hear this, as a brother. As a brother. Do you know that in Hebrews it says that Jesus Christ is not ashamed to call us his brethren. Brothers are really powerful. Brothers is something, read in the Bible about brethren. Read about the brethren. And Christ, even though he is high and lifted up, he has gone through what none of us have gone through. You have not yet resisted sin unto the shedding of blood, Peter told us. But as a brother, no matter what, Jesus Christ is high and holy, he's lifted up, but yet he looks at us, and says to the weakest amongst us, really, he says, I'm not ashamed to call you brother. And in that way, this man relates to us. And let me just say that he's got, you know, 40 plus years of ministry and being a believer, walking with God. And I want to say this to the band, especially to those musicians that he is really connecting with, okay? 
But as a brother, I mean, he was doing music, writing music, relating with music before many of you were born. All of you were born on that band. <laughs> but I'm saying as a brother, I really believe I can feel him saying, I am not ashamed to call you brothers. So he's a father, yes, and there are not many of those, and thank God for that, but a true brother can say, I'm not ashamed to call you brother. You may be, you don't know half the notes, half the music, but just I love the way he encourages the band as an elder brother. Hallelujah. And then, thirdly, was he re he's relating to us as a friend. He's relating to you and I and to you fire starters as a friend. And what does the friend do? As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens the countenance of his friend. And he's here to sharpen the ax, to sharpen the tools, to sharpen us up. And Pete came out in the same, obviously the same spirit tonight, laying out the gauntlet. Provoking us was one word used. Pete used it tonight again concerning what Leonard said this morning. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. How many are going to pick it up? I mean, I'm telling you, he laid it out for us. As a father, as a brother, as a friend. And he will return. Amen. And this connection is for real and it's living. And we have our responsibility and our duty, whatever you want to call it. And we are going to rise to the occasion. Amen. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, prepare an offering, okay? Praise God. Uh, let's uh, give generously. Let's give in the spirit of the meeting and the meetings we've had since Friday night. Thank you, God. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you, Father. For your perfect gift, which comes down from heaven, Lord. You, the Father of lights. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, bless the band extremely. Bless those that have given themselves through the last three days. Bless them with extreme blessing, Lord. Let it overflow to everybody tonight in Jesus Christ's mighty name. If you need a tax deduction, you're giving cash. We have little envelopes that you can pick up right here and write that amount on so you get a cash a deduction for your cash. Otherwise, write a check out to Firestarters Ministries.
Everything, everything you do So gently you touch So sweetly you move I spend my life chasing after you I never get enough But still I pursue your Majesty Essence of your Majesty Worship in your
Still I search for the city not made by their hand. So let the kingdom come, making all things new. For the kingdom comes with you. Let the kingdom stand. Prepare the way for the kingdom is at hand. And man to man, they. Still I search for the city not made by their hand. So let the kingdom come, making all things new. The kingdom comes with you. Let the kingdom stay.
Thank you. Thank you, God, for this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these people, God. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus, and we just, we want you to go with us wherever we go tonight. We want you to do things with us. We thank you for the word, Lord, that was preached tonight. Get that into our hearts, Lord, and then let it, let it come out in our lives, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we just want to say to you, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Amen. Good night. <laughs> uh, if anybody is interested, I still have CDs over there. And uh, I got if, if you buy one of everything, I'll give you 50% off. Uh, so that'd be great. Tonight there's someone sleeping better than they've ever slept before. Somewhere somebody's fighting a war. Somewhere a man is taking the first kiss 